What's up guys, Philip here bringing you a review and today we're going to be doing a software review on Logitech's new mouse called the Logitech MX Anywhere 3. Now they do have a few versions of this mouse, more specifically the regular version which is MX Anywhere 3 and the Mac version and they're essentially going to be the same in terms of software features. To install the software you're going to be popped up with this welcome screen and it's going to show you some of the basic features on how the mouse works. And the first thing it's going to talk about is the free scroll where you can have it spin endlessly or you can have the clicky scroll. Then you can have the mode shift button and that pretty much just toggles the uh, scroll wheel unlimited scrolling and the clicky scroll which is the center button here. And then you have the horizontal scroll that you can do is if you hold this front button and scroll at the same time it scrolls left and right as opposed to just scrolling up and down by default. And then it's saying here that you can switch different profiles and just customize your settings between various apps, which we'll get into in a sec here. And yeah, these are some predefined settings that the mouse can come with, and we are going to continue to install these on our computer. So here it detected some of the softwares, and we already installed them, so we're going to go ahead and see what the customization settings look like. So once you actually get to the customization screen, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. And if you don't see this, you might see some of your other Logitech products connected. I have a few other mice here that I use in different locations, but this is the MX Anywhere 3. So by default, uh, these are the buttons that are programmable. You have the scroll wheel, which is when you click it, the center button that's on top of the scroll wheel, and then these two buttons. So you pretty much have four buttons you can customize. And these features by default, this is the mode shift. What that does is it triggers the scroll wheel to be clicky or endless scroll. And then these buttons are forward and backward by default in your browser or specific applications that support back and forth. And then something cool about this mouse is let's say uh, in my case, I'm a video editor. I use Final Cut. That's what I typically edit my videos in. So when I use this mouse in Final Cut Pro, the mouse is going to detect that I am in Final Cut Pro and the shortcuts are going to change. So before this uh, said middle mouse button, just whatever your default middle mouse button does, but with uh, Final Cut Pro, it's now start, pause, and playback. And this is going to be really handy because these are features that you use on the fly and you don't want to constantly switch between these keybind settings like in any application. You want this to do this in Final Cut Pro. And then here you have redo and undo, which is really handy because when you're editing videos, you're constantly, you know, constantly clicking command Z, command uh, whatever, just undoing and redoing. And you can really customize what these uh, buttons do in every application. In Google Chrome, by default, its middle mouse button is open a new tab. I guess that's pretty handy. Uh, forward, backward, and you can customize this. Let's say you don't want this to open a new tab. You know, you can have other settings here. Maybe you want close tab, or maybe you want to reopen your previously closed tab. And there's a lot of vi different customization settings you can uh, mess with, including media controls here, maybe even gestures. They also have a key bind setting as well. So let's say in your when you have Chrome open, you can click keystroke assignment. So you can cl click a sequ sequence of keys. So let's say you want to do command shift uh, T for whatever reason. And when you're in Chrome, the middle mouse button will click Shift Command T. And I was typing that on my keyboard just now. And you can do whatever you want. You can do things like Shift A, Shift T, Shift V, whatever you want to do. You can do that with this custom key settings. But typically, I found that I didn't really have to use this unless I'm doing something very specific to a specific application in Google. Most of the settings here are pretty much built in 
features into the Google Chrome browser. You also have system commands like your brightness goes up and down and while you're in the Chrome tab only, you have Smart Zoom, basically endless features here. If you wanna select a specific app, you just go in this top right corner here, you can click Add Application, and it'll detect some apps that you have on your computer, and you can customize the specific shortcuts to that application. And if you do all applications, that's just pretty much gonna be your global settings for the mouse if you just want the same settings all over the computer. Now, if you click on this tab, point and scroll, this is your pointer speed, which can also be adjusted in the settings. They have an option here as well. Scrolling speed, this is how fast the scroll wheel scrolls. Uh, scrolling direction, this is if you like it natural or standard, and that's like reverse scrolling. Windows and Mac have it opposite. Smooth scrolling, if you wanna make it a little sm more smooth rather than choppy. Horizontal scrolling, which by default is if you hold the front button plus scroll, it'll allow for horizontal scrolling and you can disable that if you're not a fan of that. And then there's a few other scroll settings that you can customize here. Logitech Flow is a really cool feature and this graphic pretty much explains what it does. You can have two computers next to each other and you can use one mouse to kind of just uh, s switch between them and you can copy files here, images, copy paste things, pretty much some of the basic things that you do on a daily basis on your regular computer, but you can now do it between two computers with just a mouse. That is a really cool feature because if you do, this could possibly replace things like Dropbox if you just transfer little files here and there, but you might need something like Dropbox if you're constantly transferring larger files between computers. This is kind of one of those situational things where if you need something like this, you're gonna love it, but if it's like not an important to feature to you, then it's not that important, I guess. I personally don't use this, but it's definitely helpful if you have a Windows and a Mac next to each other, or a Mac and a Mac, or Windows and Windows, whatever setup you're rolling with. And that's pretty much how the software works. The features are gonna be the same for the Mac version of this mouse and the regular, uh, version of this mouse, which is the MX Anywhere 3. If you have any questions on how the software features work with this mouse, leave your comments down below and I'll get back to you ASAP with some answers to some of your questions. If you want to see my full review of this mouse, I'm going to leave my link down in the description below and you can check that video out. If you enjoyed this quick software tutorial and you want to see more stuff like this and just product reviews, don't forget to click that subscribe button and I'll keep you in the loop with some of the latest stuff happening in the tech world. Also, don't forget to like this video and leave your comments down below. I'll see you in the next one.